The artist's brain is an independent variable. When brought into the everyday world, their senses find meaning in even the most mundane observations. The reaction must only be told by the artists themselves. I'm Loverboy, and this is an experiment. Today's guest is a singer, songwriter, artist, and musician. He has lived overseas and absolutely all over the United States, but spent most of his childhood in the Bay Area. He has found incredible success playing on some of the biggest stages as part of the band Eric Krasno and the Assembly, as well as his own artist project. He has competed on some of the biggest shows with some of the biggest names. Very few people know their way around a guitar in their own voice as much as this man. Please welcome today's guest, James the Eighth. Welcome, hey, welcome, man. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. I'm so happy you're here. So I met you through Curtis. Mm-hmm. Curtis Kelly. Who was on last season. Cool, and cool, cool. he's a big reason that I've met a lot of my favorite people in LA. But you being one Ditto. of the newer and one of the the closer friends that I've made this this year. Yeah, he uh, he's a recent friend of mine as well because we've only had that Krasno gig for about, I mean, that came up during COVID. Uh, and it's only been about a year since we were introduced and started making music together. But he's become one of my, like, fastest friends and, like, the guy that I have made most of my homies in L.A. through. He seems to be that guy. He's he's one of those he's like a good, hub. good human magnets. He absolutely is. Yeah. So I have to start this off by asking a question. Where have you lived? <laughs> um yes. <laughs> <laughs> All the places. Um no, so uh, I was born in Japan. Um was there for about a year and then we moved to Singapore and then there for 4 years, then moved to Hong Kong for a year. And then England for four years, and then landed in the Bay Area for, I was in uh, fourth grade, and then graduated high school from there. Went to college in Idaho originally oh my gosh. <laughs> for two years, and then transferred to a school in Utah. Uh, lived there for a while, moved to New York for a little shy of two years, and then moved here right before, like six months before the pandemic. Shut everything down. That's um. I can't imagine what your passport looks like. That's <laughs> got to be incredible. It's it's quite stamped. So you've seen a lot of the world. You've seen a lot of different cultures. You've seen a lot of the United States too, which is incredibly diverse. Yeah. Um. There's actually there's a term that I recently learned from somebody who is this as well. Was raised overseas. It's called third culture kid. When you're an expat, so um, an American living abroad in like the international community, like you're going to in the international schools, most of the people that you're hanging with are American uh, or it, from your native country's culture, that it, it's like this term that is supposed to it, it like a lot of them are artists. A lot of them are uh, introverts. A lot of them are, there's just, there's like a laundry list of all these things that like I was reading down this list. This guy told me, yeah, if you were raised overseas, but you're an American citizen, American culture, whatever, this is you. And then I looked at all these things and it was like reading a horoscope. It just oh, like hit me with all these things. It was like, oh, wow, that's me. That's me. That's me. Is there anywhere that you've lived that kind of felt um, the most unique out of the bunch mm, the most unique um Hon hong kong is definitely the most like i don't know it's just a, it's it, well no singapore is the same way and japan is the same way it that's a tough question unique like i don't know unique in what ways which one would you say that you draw the most inspiration from mm, england mm. Uh, it, it it i mean Probably that is due uh, to the fact that that's where I was the oldest when we lived overseas because mm -hmm. I don't really remember Japan or Singapore. Um, I have the most memories of England, but also I started playing guitar when we moved when I was 10 years old, when we moved to the Bay Area. And I started getting into a lot of music that was British musicians, a lot of like Led Zeppelin, a lot of uh, Clapton, a lot of the Beatles, all this music that came from England. And so having these memories of England and then starting to play guitar. I think that's why it's like, I just love England still. I've been back a couple times. Um, and just 
the vibe and the the music that happens there and the whole it's just it's like there's there are I went to a couple guitar shops that are famous guitar shops that like Clapton had stopped in to buy guitars regularly or like Jimmy Page went to this guitar shop I'll go to those places and it feels like this is the equivalent of going to like Harry Potter world for some people this is as, yeah. this is like my world of like Hogwarts of these like young Jimmy Page and Eric Clapton going into these guitar shops in this like alley in London in this small little hole in the wall shop that stuff is like, yeah, that's, I just want to live in that world so badly that that is definitely the most inspiring of all the places that I've lived. I mean, since then, you've definitely found your place in the same industry that you're obviously obsessed with as well. You're, you're on the stage with, with legends and people that, that are going to be known as some of the best of all time. What, what is it like being immersed in that now after being so in love with that growing up? Yeah, it's a trip. Um, it's weird sometimes. I mean, we had, we've only had so far, we've only had, I think six dates playing with Kraz mm -hmm. so far. And the tour is scheduled for, uh, early, uh, 2022. But yeah, being on that stage, there's a lot of times where it's just like, all right, he's looking at me. It's my turn to take a solo. The guy that I stole guitar licks from when I was teaching myself how to do this, just gave me the nod to take a solo. On the stage at Red Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, where, which, yeah, it was really funny. The, my my parents and one of my sisters came to that show, and it's like this sea of people. But, like, if I, my parents and my family was, like, at exactly the point of, if I was to just look out at the stage, they're, like, or at the crowd, they're, like, right there. So as I'm playing this Red Rock show, it's kind of funny. It's comforting, but it's also just funny. That I'm looking up and my parents are just right there, like, geeking out, going all crazy. It was funny. That's was such fun. a trip. That's got to be a crazy feeling, just being on a stage in front of that many people and knowing that you're up there doing what you do best. It, it's, yeah. Uh, it's just, it's such a insanely great opportunity to learn from some of the most killing musicians that I've had, like, the good fortune to play with. Oh, yeah. We got For all Luna you listeners out there, Luna is just getting real comfy. The cutest little dog. Oh, <laughs> she's all up on Loverboy's lap. That's <laughs> really cute. Um, playing with those music, just the whole crew that is that makes up the assembly around Kraz is just some of the best musicians that I could ask to play for or play with um, and learn from. And it's it's. It's just such good vibes in that band and everybody's just uh, like there's the perfect amount of roasting and <laughs> celebrating each other. It's great. It's 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 the most rewarding in that sense. If I think about it in the other sense, if I think about like this is Eric Krasno, I'm playing guitar next to Eric Krasno. I usually play like shit. So I don't. I think about like listen to this music, listen to what like what that organ just did and yeah. what this bass line is doing with it and how funky and how feel and vibey this all is when i get in when i let myself just focus on that that it just it gets so fun and it gets so educational in a mm. like a light-hearted way like it doesn't feel like okay kids sit here and let us learn you how to play this here music it's just like look what i just did just because we were in the vibe and it called for it and i felt it and i did it mm. that kind of stuff so you're playing right. with Eric Krasno, and, and in that band is a whole bunch of legends, including what will be one of the greatest drummers of all time, Mr. Curtis Kelly. Mr. Curtis Kelly. And then you're rocking next to Joe on the bass, who is talent unlike anything I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean... it it is The common denominator uh, for everybody in the band is leading with feel, is, is uh, like having the ear to listen to the music and feel what it's doing and really play into that and know how to lift that up by playing their part, like not just playing their part, but like playing their role, doing the yeah. thing that they can feel doing it with they intention. need to do. Yeah. That like, it just comes, it, it, it bubbles up when everybody locks in like that. It just becomes about like ease into it and let it yeah. sort of, 
take you over. You don't like try and force anything about it. Part of that too is just knowing your instrument so well that you can trust it and you can trust yeah. yourself with it. Yeah. You definitely have to come into those situations with like enough, enough of your playing in muscle memory that you can trust your fingers or your ear, or your hands to do, to be able to express. Yeah. It, just period. Yeah. To be able to express yourself. So you're playing with these incredible people, but you also are an artist yourself and you have your own project. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. What, what direction are you going with that while also doing, you know, playing these, these other shows with other bands? So, I mean, this, the musician stuff that I do is largely a byproduct of the artistry stuff that I do. That's, I mean, the songwriting and the arranging and the like, the the doing that part and the yeah that side of music is why I do music and it's why I've gotten any good because it's it's about this creative zone flow state of mind thing that is so transcendental and so meditative and so cathartic for me in my room to be writing and playing like that necessary ness absolutely necessary um that is is what has led me to be able to do the musician stuff because mm -hmm. I get into those like that is my therapy. I do that all the time, uh, it, it, literally every day. After a twelve hour session with Curtis, I'll come home and I'll play guitar. That's how you wind down. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Um, so that I mean, it's what I it's what I started at. That's what got me into music was writing songs um, and. Working with so I met Kraz and started writing music with him and have been writing music with him for the last like is when I moved to New York. It's been about four years, um, and he sort of took me under his wing, sort of as a mentor, sort of role, and helped me figure out how to be a little bit more poignant with my artistry and how to like say something of merit that isn't heavy handed and that like is is lifted up by the music surrounding it and how to consider every corner of your artistry as you're in that writing phase and all that. Um, and in throughout that process, uh, we just became like really close. And a lot of the times going over to hang for sessions just turns into going over to hang. Uh, and yeah, just by virtue of that, the time for him to like put a band together around this new record was coming up and, he knows I can sing. He knows my music sensibility after just being together in that writing sort of headspace with me for so long, uh, that it just was natural to like, to have me be in his band. Um, and eventually the goal is if I can twist his arm hard enough to be opening for the band on the road, like to have the opening slot before we play as the assembly. Um, because That'd be incredible. Uh, it's, that would be, that's like my dream situation to be able to ha use my artistry to like show before the show starts why I'm a part of it. That yeah. really does feel like prove your point to that. Yeah, that's that's where my my thumbprint as a musician really comes from is the, my songwriting and, and coming like marrying me trying to figure out guitar with the songwriting process. That is where. It, it, I'm not good enough to be in Kraz's band because I'm just a good guitar, because I can play guitar well. Yeah. I'm good enough because I have dived into these same alleys of expression with guitar in artistry in similar ways that Kraz has and have been influenced by his playing. So it works really well and we can lock in really well. And we do a lot of like guitar harmony stuff where we're like bending notes at the same time and with the same phrasing and that stuff is where it's like those are the juicy moments playing with him where it's just like oh yeah that just feels good sounds good and we have this killing band around that sort of a moment that's like Best thing the most world. rewarding moments of those shows so I think a big thing that people find when they do find success in the industry they're in or the art that they're doing, they find success outside of what their main goal is. And a lot mm. of people fall back on that and forget about the reason they started. How did you know and, and why do you continue to do the artist project? Why do you continue to jump and, and put both your feet into that side of it? Because you obviously also have something else that is... That is what most people would call incredible success. Well, thank you. That's 
It's a very nice phrasing of that question. Um, I mean, I was bullied as a kid, and I was in a very dogmatic religion, and I moved around a lot, so I was always the new, the new chubby kid that was a part of this weird religion, and who's this guy? So I got bullied a lot, and by the time guitar and songwriting came into my life, that became my way of coping, really, of dealing with with that and of like building the the like the foundations of what my confidence in my abilities to do what I do where that has come from is from those therapeutic moments for myself when I was going into my room and playing guitar after school for four hours and obsessing over writing a song and then finding a new artist and just being so into the cathartic element of songwriting and of lyrics and of emotions tied to that with your music like that whole world is just so juicy to me and that is how i have like i'm an i'm a pretty anxious person and that's it like diving into the reasons that i do this for my soul is the only thing that can keep me doing well at it like yeah. that can help me like approaching it that way is the only way that I can improve or do well or do have it feel rewarding. So there's no, de there's, there is zero debate in my mind. There's the only reason I can do the crash thing is because of my natural instinct into how I do music has been that like therapy craving sort of thing. I, I definitely can relate on the sense of, of having, issues with other people as a child and, and feeling like an outcast or feeling different. And rather than putting all of that, that shitty energy into being an asshole, I put it into hitting drums and learning yeah. music and pushing myself to a, a point that I couldn't remember what else bothered me. Mm. Um, and I feel like a lot of kids find art for that exact reason. It's, it's therapy. It's gets you out of this everyday world. It's, it really takes you to a different part of your brain. It really does. Um, I, I, in college, I started studying music, but then I ended up getting a degree in psychology. And all the courses that I was taking, I, there's the most interesting things that I would learn would always be about flow state of mind. I had focused a lot of my classes on like on two things. One, uh, classes that you take if you're going to become a counselor, a therapist, mm -hmm. and then classes that explain sort of uh, the neurochemical imbalances associated with different mental health issues or just states of mind, how that affects. And I ended up just studying a lot of flow state of mind things because that is the beauty of music. It, it, it lets you get into that flow state of mind where time melts away, the feelings of like hunger or thirst don't exist, your ego tends to melt away a little bit because you're not thinking about yourself and what mm. you're doing. You're just thinking about this thing that you're actively and passionately pursuing. And there are – your brain releases neurochemicals that help suppress those autonomic response sort of things so that you can stay present in what you're doing. And and that is – beautiful that is that is why music is what it is to me what an incredible way to reassure yourself that you're that this is what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. you you looked at it from from a perspective that most people wouldn't have you know from from a scientific from a <laughs> uh uh educational logical. you know perspective yeah. that's incredible that's that's a, a second form of reinsurance now you know that not only is the talent there but the reason behind it is there mm. and that's that's going to help a lot of people i think i mean i mean if you hear that, just just understand that when you when you need to do something, when it's that important to you that it gives you relief mm. and it's that healthy for you, put all your eggs in that basket because that's that's where you're going to find true true happiness and true true you know like that's community. That's where the goods come from. When when like I mean I write these songs doing therapy for myself and it amounts to therapy for someone else. It gives someone else a moment to have some catharsis over some emotion or some experience that they can relate to another human over. And that's the entire point of existence in my, from my privileged worldview is, is to have those kind of human connections with everybody because we're all in this together and that's what that is reflecting. So it's, it's a very selfish 
way of of trying to help someone because it's really just me in a room being sad and trying to talk through with myself why I feel sad until a good song comes out. Uh, but that can help someone who, you know, doesn't have the same relationship with music as me. Like maybe it's just in their own ways, they've, you know, connected with something that isn't music, but they still had, I mean, he, music is such a human sort of, Experience. experience that yeah you don't need that understanding of it's it universal. To, yeah to be able to to have that sort of catharsis from it and that's that's amazing yeah well dude you're you're uh an incredibly inspirational person and i think you could really show a lot of people that no matter where you come from whether it's one state or 60 or what your background is or whatever it is when you need something and you want something and you really use all your energy to go get it you can get it, and and I'm excited to see you uh, playing all these huge stages as an artist as well as with the Kras Band. And it was such a pleasure to have you on here. Thank yeah. you, uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you, my man. This is my my first podcast, and I'm oh, honored. That's exciting. This was this was fun. To everybody listening, I'm James the Eighth, and this is an experiment. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, dude. <laughs> Experience is the experiment. <laughs>